All right, hey guys, so here we are with Brandon again. Thanks for letting me borrow that AK, that was pretty cool. Absolutely, looked like you were having a good time. If only it wasn't AR. Yeah, don't push it. Guys ready? Three, two, one. AK-50, this, you know, this was like, you know, I think when we first met, you know, you started pushing the AK-50 and you opened this huge project and everything. Yeah, and I was an idiot. <laughs> we'll get into that. Um, but pretty ambitious. How old were you? Like 21? 20? I was hell when I first started working on it, 18. So it really just started with, uh, I just, just started learning how to build AKs and, and such like that. And I was just like, you know, it's, nobody's ever done, you know, uh, an, uh, a true AK-50. And like... I wonder like how hard that would be to do, just even as a garage project, trying to figure it out. And then I, I was asking different people and it really, the, the main thing is it can't be done. And I'm like, well, that doesn't make sense. I really think it can be. Yeah, yeah. And so it became personal at that point, I guess. The AK-50 here is actually, uh, this is our V1. This is the first one we ever got to fire. Mm -hmm. So this one actually functioned and, and we, you know, it's just kind of in itself, a timeline of everywhere we went on the project. You can see where we've moved the gas port location further forward. We've cut up so much on this gun. We have we have Frankenstein so much to make this work. Mm -hmm. But this is the one that did fire for the first time, and it was the one that later on, once we got it, you know, the gassing right and everything, it was firing and cycling. Cool. So I want to know. I want to know less about your successes with this, and mm -hmm. I want to know more about your failures. Good, because there's a lot of them. Yeah, we can go on that. So I, I didn't even know how to do CAD back back when we started on all this stuff. Um, still not even all that great, but it just, I had no idea of how to do it. So I had to hire people for that. And so I wasn't working with gun guys. I was just working with CAD guys and having to kind of figure it out as it was going along. Okay. Um, the prototyping stuff, we, it, was, it was very expensive early on. So there wasn't a lot of stuff. We, we hadn't figured out how to do the lean prototyping approach to it. We had our gas port drilled far too close mm -hmm. to the to the chamber. So... The, the pressure, the unlock pressure was super high. Our extractor was ripping through casing rims and, and the ones that it wasn't ripping through, it, that inducing failure, it was still like you could tell it was a super big impression, which means that you know it was extracting under too much pressure. It was still pushing out against the walls of the casing. Mm -hmm. So we had to move that forward a little bit and it ran a lot smoother after that. How did you, how did you isolate the gas though? How did you realize, what if we just push this two inches forward as opposed to doing something else like lightening the bolt carrier or the bolt itself or some other dimension? It was mostly just kind of like a, I guess kind of a common sense approach where it's like, okay, so we could reduce the gas port size, but then, you know, it's not the speed of the, uh, of the bolt carrier that's the problem. It's how soon it's happening after the round is fired. So theoretically, you know, you've got like a five inch cartridge. So your chamber is basically ending here, the bullets here, and you're already feeding gas up through the piston here. So it's like, that's pretty close, mm -hmm. but you can actually dramatically decrease the amount of pressure just by moving it that far. Gotcha. And so that's, and that, that worked for a short while until we ran into another failure, which was uh, galling. We ran into a heat treat issue where uh, we rookie mistake, I didn't know any better at the time. Bolt, uh, the bolt locking lugs and the uh, the barrel extension, which houses the locking lugs as well. Which was, this is, a, this is the new design or this is the one that had the galling problem? This is the one that has the galling problem. So all this stuff, this is, that actually is part of this right here. So mm -hmm. they were heat treated to the same hardness, which is apparently a big no-no. And that's where you got to figure out what's the optimal uh, heat treat spec for each individual part. You can't just bring a whole batch of parts together to the heat treater like we did back then, just like, 43 to 45 Rockwell, here you go. And it doesn't quite work that way. And sometimes different steels are better for different things. Different hardnesses are better for different things. And mm -hmm. you know, even just making sure that the two aren't the same. You see this cut in here? We had to cut this open here on this side because when it was ejecting, we were noticing it was smacking the side of the receiver and wanting to basically, if it was allowed to, it, was, it would induce a failure. And you were talking about this triangular bolt face. Mm -hmm. um, tell me about it. You said you know, you're still using an AK what, a pivot system here, but what about this? Why did you go with this triangular piece? Just a better way to get better surface area on that. A lot of, um, like pretty much the vast majority of 50 cals use the triangular bolt lugs, just a little bit stronger. Mm -hmm. 
thought about going back to the AK design, but right now we, we at least know this works for 50 BMG. Yeah. If you look over here, you actually have that cam is almost exactly the same as, could you grab that bolt for me, please? Yeah. Or the bolt, no, here, uh, yeah. there you go. It's almost exactly the same as the AKM cam, uh, cam lug, and the cam groove is exactly the same as well on the bolt carrier. So we try to keep things as AK as possible. Mm -hmm. And we even went back to, uh, on the new ones, the shark fin ejector. Okay. So that's gonna help it kind of retain more AK as well, because here we have a plunger style ejector. Gotcha. Which, I mean, it worked for us, but I kind of want to keep it more AK, mm -hmm. you know? Okay. And so this thing, and this little spring, mm -hmm. pushing there, you were explaining to me earlier about why, why that was necessary. Um, yeah. Spring it forward. Can you tell me why again? So that was kind of a, a band-aid fix because it had too much play in the gun. Because you know, it's one thing to look at something in SolidWorks, and it's another thing to actually see how it performs in in the real world. Mm -hmm. Because if you actually put this in the gun here and you push it forward, if you have any sort of resistance, like for example, feeding a cartridge mm -hmm. from a magazine into the, uh, into the chamber, yeah. it will start prematurely rotating. We were having an issue with it impacting the front mm -hmm. of the barrel extension. In the wrong position, so it's not going in. It's not even exactly. going in, it's not even entering the right way at the right location. Right? It's really not good for your bolt either or, or anything because it was just smacking and you could see where it was deforming and whatnot. So gotcha. we, we figured out if we put a small spring behind it and assist spring, uh, that solved that problem, at least for the prototype. And then on this, you had this cool thing with the 1911 guide rod springs, and they yeah. clip on the uh, the recoil springs. You have a dual AK recoil spring system going on here. For sure, mostly just honestly because it looks really cool. Because of the wires connecting it, uh, you can only get 50% compression on an AK spring before it bottoms out, mm -hmm. and then you're gonna have a really bad time if you go past that. However, if you put an a, uh, a 1911 spring at the end, we found out they actually clip on. Mm -hmm. So because that is a uh, that spring doesn't have anything on the inside of it, it can actually go to full compression. So if you put that on the end of an AK spring like this, instead of 50% compression, you're getting more like 60, yeah. which that's what you need on something like this because the dimensions don't work out one to one. Mm -hmm. And that's oh, oh, there you go. so in here. So you've actually got dual <laughs> AK springs here. And that yeah. fall also falls into um, you know, your use of AK components within mm -hmm. the trigger group, within, well, the springs. Yeah. What most people don't realize, standard AK fire control group. The standard AK trigger group will work and will actually punch primers, no problem. Okay, and then, but with, you've got, you know, the AR style telescope and stock if you want to, or the Magpul piece? We changed that. The length of pull was pretty crazy. That was a big problem that we really just, so the weight of a gun is dramatically increased the further out you hold it, the felt weight of the gun. Mm -hmm. And so if you have a, a already an issue with length of pull, where you're already having to hold the gun this far off your shoulder, 30 pounds isn't really a lot for a semi-auto 50. It's pretty, pretty normal. Mm -hmm. But if you have a 30 pound gun that you have to hold out to here, mm -hmm. that's a lot of weight to support. Gotcha. And now tell me about this buffer thing yeah. that you guys have. So I'm excited for this one. This one's from the new new designs. We've already had some of the parts machined. Uh, that's gonna be, so the new one is stamped. Yeah. Which is gonna be interesting, because that's a little bit more in my alley, and it's, it's just cheaper to prototype, cheaper to do all this stuff with, and I actually think it's gonna work. Mm -hmm. But this buffer is for the rear trunnion. Um, is this the rear trunnion? Yes, so this, is, this yeah. piece is the rear trunnion here, this piece of the recoil spring you know, buffer assembly. Okay. And this is to basically just have a place for the bolt carrier and whatnot to bottom out and basically not you know, kill the shooter. That's mm -hmm. usually a good thing. So what we have here is uh, there's all sorts of variations on, on 50 BMG loads. You know, you could shoot military ball, but you could also shoot like super hot 770 grain at 3000 feet per second. That's you know, got a lot more energy to it. So one of the things to address that is a sliding buffer assembly with a really tight spring, kind of like, a, I guess uh, taking a step, uh, a, a page out of the AA12 book or something where you have, you know, progressively, uh, progressively stiffer springs. So in the rear, if it's already made it all the way back, like this is where the recoil springs fit into here. If it's made it all the way back, instead of bottoming out here and then, you know, not only creating a hell of a recoil impulse, but also probably damaging the gun if it's actually that over gassed. Like let's say you're running the hottest ammo you could possibly find plus a suppressor. Mm -hmm. You know, you got a lot of extra gas going on. Uh, instead of bottoming out here and then just putting the extra force into the rear trunnion, it just 
instead of all at one time, it progressively slows it and stops it mm -hmm. and then pushes it back forward into cycling. Um, so what's the, what are the plans right now with uh, this new, the new, newest prototype that you have? So that's one of the things that, well, I, we, we obviously want to try to build it. We want to build it fairly soon. But that's where people kind of like, I guess it's nice when people understand that this has kind of become, with the business taken off and the YouTube channel, it's become a passion project. You know, we never took pre-orders for the AK-50. We never took anybody's money for it. This has always been something that I was just working on, like kind of for me. Mm. And uh, I'm kind of excited to get to the point where I'm finally coming back to work on it. Yeah. Because I think once we get another firing AK-50 in the world, I think it's going to be really exciting. It, it's funny to, to have you come over and want to do a video with this because I honestly, for large swaths of time, forget that I have this chilling to the left of my desk on a concrete floor, uh -huh. just kind of corroding. But this is, uh, you know what? There's a lot of good friends that help me out with this. There's a lot of mentors like Chris from Mad Custom and people like that. Really a lot of people that helped me along the way with this because I was a dumb kid who didn't know what the hell he was doing. And now I'm a dumb guy in his mid twenties who doesn't know what the hell he's doing and <laughs> still somehow making it work. Sure, right now it's ugly as hell mm -hmm. and uh, barely functional, probably limping over the finish line. But yeah, I'm proud of it. You know, people will be looking at this in like a decade or two and be like, what, someone tried to make an AK-50? What the hell's wrong with that guy? Solid. Also, ow. All right, guys, so thank you very much for coming on. And uh, you can check out Brandon at the AK guy um, on YouTube. He needs to change it to the AR guy, but that's just me. Um, All right, <laughs> I didn't want to have to kick you out. All right, we're, I'm hey, out of here. Hey, I've got an AOW right here, okay? Oh, yeah, that's right. Shoot. <laughs>